Hello, hello, my friends. Hi, everybody. That was a bit of a F up. Uh, I had this, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I had this like 30 second countdown thing on StreamYard and I went and put it up because I thought, oh my God, this is going to look really professional and all that. And then it just effed up my whole stream and it yeeted me out and I had to come back. So it didn't go well. But welcome, Deb, um, Bear. Max, good to see you guys. Hey, Shauna, good to see you. Pam, my friend, it's always good to see you. Uh, slow motion, hey, good to see you as well. Uh, welcome. If it is the evening or the afternoon or the morning, wherever you may be at the moment. Kaleidoscope, good to see you. Thanks for showing up. So um, I do have a couple of New Zealand cases going on at the moment that I'm watching and going to be doing a video on. Um, I was looking at all the sleeping bags actually when I got up this morning because it was re real cold here. It's been really cold here in the last couple of days. I definitely think it might be time for me to go and deliver some of them uh, to the homeless in the evening um, very shortly in the next few days because it's, um, yeah. Success Amelia, hello, welcome, welcome. I've seen you before. I just had to ask you, Success Amelia, um, are you okay being a mod or do you want me to take that away? Because I know it was just a temporary thing, so let me know if you want. And if um, a mod, Pam, you don't have to, honey, you just, you just sit back and relax. But if a mod can get Bear's um, link, please, and put it in the chat to his channel and sub up to him. That would be cool. It's good to see you. Well, we'll start getting into it. Obviously, we are going to the state of Oregon this week or this day because that's where the Wheel of Places sent us. And if you come here often, you'll know. Um, oh, he, he, might not, he might have gone away for a minute. Um, his name's really long in the chat. It's, it's uh, Sky Worn Storm Spotter DK103 Doug Bear 0. 0.75 for <laughs> Maybe when he comes back, because it's quite big. Um, yeah, that's all good. Just some at some stage, right? Okay, let's go to what we're here for um, and have a look at Oregon. You need to keep Amelia a mod in order to tell us apart. <laughs> yeah, probably, Dev. Um, it does get me. Welcome. So it says here, Oregon is a state in the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. Oregon is part of the western United States with the Columbia River de delineating much of Oregon's northern boundary with Washington, while the Snake River of its eastern boundary with Idaho. What the hell is Delineate? No, that is. Why can't you? Oh, there it is. Um, the 42 degree north parallel delineates the southern boundary with California and Nevada. The western boundary is formed by the Pacific Ocean. Ooh, that was a bit of a mouthful. Oregon has been home to many indigenous nations for thousands of years. The first European traders, explorers and settlers began exploring what is now Oregon's Pacific coast in the early mid 16th century. Today, this actually made me laugh. Today, with 4.2 4 million 
people over 98,000 square miles, which actually I didn't uh, um, look up, but it's 4.2 million people in Oregon State. It's 5 million people in the whole of New Zealand. So, um, yeah, crazy. Oregon is the ninth largest and 27th most populous US state. So the capital is Salem, which I actually didn't know. Uh, it's the second most populous city in Oregon with 177,000 residents. I thought Portland with 652,000 ranks as the 26th among US cities. I thought that would actually be the, um, you know, the 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 one that the um, capital <laughs> separates, Shauna, that's the word. I, I, knew, I knew it, of course. <laughs> Um, the Portland metropolitan area is the 25th largest metro area in the nation with a population of over two and a half million. Um, uh, now, while you've got that there, I'm going to open a new link and sub up to Bear as well. So I've just added and I'm subscriber 18 um, and I will watch his video goes later thank you very much for that i appreciate it if you look on a map and you want to know where oregon is i'm making sure i'm showing it to you it is over here so lately we've been having uh looking at states over the way over the other side but over this side Portland refunded, oh, defunded their police. Oh, that's a shame. Defunded, yeah, I caught you. It's okay with being a mod if you're okay to have me, TJ, and community. Yeah, absolutely. Northwest corner, right. So Washington and then Canada. All right. Let's start with our first story, um, and this is Zachary Bashir Porter, and we are in the charlieproject.org.ns, uh, dot, sorry, org, yeah, uh, I need to run to the store, okay, you can do that, <laughs> no worries, Autumn, I can't make it here much, oh, that's good. Sweet as pancakes. Okay, so this young man has been missing since 2013 from McKinville, Oregon. He's a Native American male. He would now be 34, but he was born in 1988 and he was, uh, sorry, went missing in 1998 and he was 25 years old. 5 foot 11 to 150 to 7, I was about to say 700 pounds. I think that's a bit too much. Um, 150 to 170 pounds. A dark coloured T-shirt, blue jeans and skate shoes, what he was wearing. Distinguishing characteristics. Native American male with brown hair, brown eyes. His name is Zach. He has a scar on his four quarter inch scars on his upper lip. And he is of a new a new piet. A new it. A new it descent. Sorry if I got that wrong. Is there more wrenches on screen than you have? Really? Give us a look at uh, there's green and blue. It's green and blue is nice. Nicely deep. Made a few members green, which was awesome oh and there's a few mods here oh, i suppose there is pam smith's just a um she's just an honorary mod she doesn't have to actually do anything she just needs to sit down and relax hey bear um they shared your channel darling oh that's your channel kaleidoscope give me a look oh yeah i've been subscribed to you anyway but yeah please um share them right Let's keep going. Um, details of disappearance. So I'm trying to use his name. Zach Porter left his McKinville, Oregon home. 
at 11 a.m. on July 23rd, 2013 and went to North Bend, Oregon to sell a motorcycle to a buyer he'd met on the internet. His family got text messages from his phone after he arrived in North Bend, but they're not sure he sent the messages himself. So uh, let's have a look at this map. He left his home in McKinville, which is up here, and you can't see it. <laughs> you can see it now. I'm sorry, so motion. Uh, it'll happen for you. Just, just wait. One day, you'll be green. <laughs> so up here is McKinville, and down here is North Bend. So apparently, he was going to buy a motorcycle, uh, no, sell a motorcycle to a buyer he had met online. Um, And he did meet with the buyer and sold the motorcycle. Porter, or Zach, told his parents he planned to get a ride home from the buyer. But the buyer said that Zach had arranged to get a ride from a friend and was going to meet that friend at the Myrtlewood factory. He never arrived home and has never been heard from again. So this down sounds dodgy as. And I know there's a lot of people watching um, lurkers, we call them please feel free to come down and have a chat. At the time of his disappearance, Zach was the single parent, listen to this guys, the single parent of a five-year-old son and the primary caregiver to his disabled mum. So this poor guy, 25, and he had a five-year-old son um, that he looked after, single parent, and he looked after his disabled mum. So sounds like a gorgeous young man really with a heart of gold. His family stated his disappearance is out of character. They don't believe he would have abandoned his family. The motorcycle buyer is considered a person of interest in the case, but not a suspect. Porter's disappearance remains unsolved and his family believes he was murdered. Um, yeah, very, very sad and very, very dodgy sounding. Uh, and people do it all the time, don't you? You go and, um, sorry, I think I missed something. You go and pick up stuff from um, online. I know that I go and pick up stuff from other people's houses. I've had people come to my house to pick up stuff. Um, so it happens all the, th all the time. Um, Max, thank you very much, Max. That is so nice of you. Thank you so much. It's so generous. That's awesome. And slow motion, you got one. Woohoo, Sama, Shauna, yay. So, and blue looking now. All right. We're going to go on to the next page, which gives us far more detail of what's going on and a little bit about her, Zach, as well. You are all great. You are all uh, sharing stuff and being kind, and I love you all for it. Okay, so this one here is coreysobell.medium.com. Uh, it says, far from home, where is Zach Porter? The single father disappeared after completing a Craigslist sale in a faraway town. Um, how, how long was it? Oh, yeah, nearly four hours, so it's definitely a while. Zachary Porter, or Zach for sure, had an abundance of people who cared about him. If you met the 25-year-old, you would realise exactly why. In addition to being the caretaker for both his grandmother and mother, he also cared for his son. His family was his number one priority. He had no difficulty proving it. So he sounds like just an amazing young man. A mere glimpse of Zach's photos presents a sizable window into the young man's personality. Together they paint a picture of a popular, humorous and amicable person. The young man's contagious grin is hard to ignore and photos of him by himself are difficult to find. And several he has his arm around the shoulder of a family member or friend. Doesn't that just like pull at your heartstrings? <laughs> I know it really pulls at my heartstrings for sure. Hey, Curious, good to see you. 
According to Myron Porter, Zach's father, the young man had a fiery side as well. He said at times Zach made no effort to hide his feisty and cocky attitudes, but that was the beauty of Zach. He was a man of many dimensions. So he sounds like he was a bit of a cheeky bugger as well. Please um, do all the um, like and subscribe and what's the other one? Share. <laughs> um, that would be really cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Zach's level of responsibility and maturity surpassed his age. He flourished as an adult. He had a dream of moving to southern Los Angeles to open a body shop once he saved enough money but bear in mind he was taking uh care of his grandmother and mum and he's a single dad to um a five-year-old excuse me while i get my mint um everything screeched to a halt most heartbreaking and agonizing way possible on july 23rd 2013 those close to zach discovered just how significant he was to those around him and an eight-year and county journey commenced. Handsome young man. It was the morning of July 23rd, 2013, and 25-year-old Zach Porter told his mum he planned on riding his motorcycle to the neighbouring area of Coote County, Coote County, Oregon. He recently sold the bike. Oh, my God, I can't talk. Let's try that again. The bar, uh, He recently sold the bike on Craigslist, and intended to drop it off that evening. The buyer was the original owner who had finally saved enough money to purchase it again. That's odd, isn't it? So um, it was the original owner and then he must have sold it to Zach or someone else and now he was buying it back. It's a bit weird. However, Zach's family was confused about how he would return home if he travelled to Coos County on the bike. It was 2013 and rideshare services did not exist. We've kind of figured that stuff, right? Zach contacted several friends but to no avail. Out of options, he decided to arrange a ride. He decided to leave his motorcycle title. Interesting. Very interesting. By noon, Zach had left McKinville, Oregon home for Coos County. Myron Porter, Zach's father, described the odd feelings his family had throughout the day. It was an odd day because we knew that he wasn't going to be back until at least 7 or 8 in the evening, Myron told KVAL, but by 5 we both felt agitated. So, okay, he's getting a ride home. Uh, apparently, I don't think they know how, but by five, they were getting a bit agitated. Uh, yes, said, I got called an e-bigger today for posting my cash app and paper on my Facebook. Oh, you know, you've made, you've made it when you have a troll. That's what I always say. You know, people are always going to be like that. If you do, if you work um, hours and put hours in to do something for youtube or to put on um facebook then i think that's fair fair enough yeah later that evening zach texted his dad and told him he had completed the sale and was looking for a ride home shortly after he texted the same to one of his friends however rebecca porter his mum did not believe the messages were written by her son because they contained ellipses i'm not quite sure what they are which zach never used in text messages zach never made it back to mckinville his family caught the first sight of tragedy when zach failed to call home to wish his son good night something he perpetually did when out of the house during night time sensing something was wrong his family reported him missing i uh, it's really good they got onto it really, really quickly, um, for sure. Uh, obviously, it didn't make much difference, but the, the uh, you know, I've forgotten the fucking word. Keep going, eh? Once the investigation into Zach's disappearance began, it raised even more questions. When comparing Zach's past text messages with those sent on July 23rd, 
investigators agreed with his mum's assessment that messages sent on July 23rd did not sound like Zach and were likely written by somebody else. Okay, so mum and dad think that um, the text messages are not from him and the police are believing them as well. Investigators initially speculated Zach travelled to LA to pursue his dream of starting his body ship, but quickly dismissed the theory. Um, his dad said, I ruled Los Angeles out immediately. Zach knew he was several months before he would be able to start the business. So obviously he was really serious about this business um, that he wanted to do and he was saving. Um, so what a, a yeah, great young man, quite disciplined. And with a goal, with a runaway theory being unlikely, investigators decided to track down an obvious person of interest, which obviously is the man who bought Zach's motorcycle. While the details of the man's questioning by investigators are publicly unknown, authorities confirmed that Zach had made it to Coos Bay and completed the sale. Our investigators have been involved with, uh, with this person for a while, and he is a person of interest in the case. So he is a person of interest, which he should be. He is not a suspect at this time, said Sergeant Pat Downing of the Coos County Sheriff Office. Um, I don't know what the difference is between a uh, person of interest and suspect. Perhaps it's level of um, leads or facts. I don't know. I'll stuck out. The buyer ever having a discussion with Zach about giving him a ride home that day, and by the time Zach arrived, he had already made arrangements with a friend for a ride home. The only thing that makes me think, what the hell, is um, Zach left the leathers and the title of the motorbike at his house so that the buyer had to turn around and take him home. Um, so he had he reckoned that Zach had already made arrangements with a friend for a ride home. We know that's untrue because Zach called a friend, a couple of them, and couldn't get any help. According to the buyer, Zach planned to meet his friend at Milder Ward Factory. However, Myron, his dad, said Zach told him a different story that day. As was told to me from Zach, the buyer of the motorcycle had a business trip in Seattle and was going to drop him off in McKinville on the way. Myron told the World Link, although the buyer was questioned, no charges in, connected, in connection to Zach's disappearance were filed against him. Surf efforts were launched among the vast stretches of highway near both McKinville and Coos County, but none of the searches turned up any trace of Zach. From there, the investigation stalled. It has now been eight years since Zach's disappearance and no suspects or leads have been named. The specific area of Coos County Zach headed to, known as Hausa, was searched as well. Once again, it turned up no trace of Zach. Um, so basically, he's just vanished, vanished off the face of the earth, um, taken by aliens. I don't know. Um, that's really, really sad. So this is... After Zach's disappearance, his dad arranged a media campaign in Hauser to help reignite publicity surrounding the case, which is awesome. For him not to try and reach his son for even 24 hours, it's just never happened, he said to the media. I believe something bad has happened and I want to get to the bottom of it. I just can't even, like, imagine, you know, yeah. Person of interest is not quite a suspect. Yeah. Someone police want to talk to, but not necessarily a suspect yet. Cool. Um, 
After his dad, along with volunteers and a few sheriff's deputies, canvassed the surrounding neighbourhoods with flyers about Zach. While the media campaign successfully spread the word about Zach, it failed to birth any new leads. From there, the investigation began to stall. He told the KVAL, we're kind, just kind of at a den end right now. It's really sad. Days without leads turned into weeks and then months. For those close to Zach, his absence was not the sole source of anguish. The family had the unimaginable task of informing Zach's five-year-old son of his disappearance. And how the hell, how the, I had it, how on earth do you explain that to a five-year-old kid? That's awful. I can't imagine. I, told, I got told that um, YouTube are cracking down on vaping online, so we'll see. Curious, thanks for popping in, Han. Hopefully I can catch you on one of our nightly shows when I decide to do them when I'm bored. <laughs> see you later. Um, he said, I want to nail absolutely down for this child, your daddy... However, the fight to find him is still ongoing. Both his dad and mum believe someone murdered their son, but do not want publicly point fingers on who they believe is responsible. There is still hope for answers. Absolutely right. Uh, YouTube isn't real life, shouldn't go real life, so there's no way that you should um, take everything as true and hassle anyone that you see in these reports because everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Uh, in February of 2021, the US attorney published a report on 11 missing indigenous people in Oregon, and among them was Zach. The report is part of the campaign aimed to investigate the epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous persons. The justice, actually, that's really good because I thought it was MMIW, uh, missing and murdered indigenous woman, uh, now it's good that it's actually people, so it covers male and female, so that's order. awesome. Got to run. Awesome. No worries. Thank you so much, Shauna, for showing up. I really appreciate, appreciate you. I really do. No dinner. Yeah, I haven't eaten today. I will get there. I will get there. All I've got is baked beans in the cupboard anyway. Who wants to eat baked beans, you know? Uh, so anyway, the Justice Department plans to distribute resources to help support ongoing cases while preventing future ones. In addition to the MMIP, the Murdered and Missing Unit, MMU, of Indian Affairs coordinated with the Department of Justice. Hopefully these efforts will be of value to the investigation of Zach Porter's disappearance. Until then, the Porters continue to hope the day they bring Zach home is within reach. His mum said, I would be happy for just a tooth. We have nothing. We have nothing to bury. Just something that I could hold on to him one last time because Drew, you want to hold on to him one last time and you don't get that chance. Actually, I'm getting a bit um, teary-eyed with that. That's really, really sad. Um, all this information of course, will be in the description box below, um, like source links, links to my Facebook page, links to the website, links to Twitter, um, how to donate, all sorts of shit is down in the box below. So how are you going? Sean has got gone. Bea, what did you have for dinner? Curious is off for lunch. What happened to your membership? Did you get one, Pam? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> There's like so much blue and green. It's so cool, guys. I love it. All right, um, let's move on to our next case. Ham and green beans with a roll. Sounds all right. I don't know about the green beans. I'm not a green bean fan, but ham on a roll? That sounds like me. 
All right, guys, let's get on to our second case that we're looking at. All right, this is Stephanie and Warner, and um, you, I'll put you in there. You guys like my seventh member, Pam. That's cool. I'm so thankful, um, Max, for doing that, and Deb the other day doing that. It's the first time I've actually made it. It's uh, made any money money off here. It's something I've earned, and, and it's nice that people overwhelmed. All right, thank you. Hey, Marla, good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Right, Stephanie Ann Warner, uh, lots of photos, which is really good. She's been missing since 2013 from Ashland, Oregon. Endangered, missing, white female, 43 years old now. Oh, no, I don't know if she was 43 when she went missing. It must have been. She's five foot two to five foot three, 115 to 135 pounds, and she has got a few cool looking tattoos. I know someone who likes tattoos. Can't remember who. She had a pink tank top, black jeans, black lace up boots, and black 27 inch cord necklace with a one by one and a half inch cross pendant made of bronze wire and nails. What the? Uh? Did you guys hear that? She had a pink top, black jeans, black lace-up boots, which sound cool. This part got me. A black 27-inch cord necklace with a one by one and a half inch cross pendant made of bronze wire and nails. That's different. I like it. I like different stuff. Interesting. She was a Caucasian male. No, she wasn't. She was a female with red hair, brown eyes. She has multiple tattoos, including a tree branch with an owl on her ankle and foot, a woman's head on her thigh, a colorful bird and flowers on her thigh, and a mermaid. Photos of the tattoos are posted with this case summary. Her ears, nose, and navel are pierced, and she has a red birthmark in the center of her back and a faded scar on her chin. She may wear eyeglasses her nickname is Steph I was just thinking imagine if um, imagine if I went missing and they had to put a thing of all my tattoos on on, on the this flyer thing you know or on whatever they're going to do on the police side or whatever and they're going to describe all my tattoos I just wonder how they would do that and where would they start that would be quite interesting just interesting to know how much it got okay so Steph Warner was last seen on her way home from the Independence Day Parade in Ashland Oregon so let's have a little bit we'll see where Ashland is we want to get rid of how the hell do you get rid of um that Ashland Oregon and I've better show it mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, in the great state of Oregon, that's that red dot. Um, okay, so she was last seen on her way home from the Independence Day Parade in Ashland, Oregon on July 4th, 2013. She was driving a dark green 2004 Nissan Xterra. She was accompanied by her boyfriend, Lenny Ames. Ames stated that Steph dropped him off at a convenience store after the parade and this was the last time he saw her. She has never been heard from again. Oh, Bear, you got like 43. I might count because I might be up there with you somewhere. You've got one, Max? I've always been a tattoo fan. Right, according to Ames, which I 
think is the name of the ex. On July 5th, he went to Steph's house and borrowed her car. To a market and then right and stayed. Shall I, shall I put it back to the one that I'm reading so you can see like that? <laughs> He said he then returned to his campsite and stayed there for several days, but did not report her missing. A photo of him is posted with this case summary. He is the prime suspect in her disappearance, which is being investigated as a homicide. Authorities say she probably died the same day. So that's a real shame. Um, so here's this guy. I can't actually enlarge any of these, but this is the guy um obviously that they think has did it the ex <clears throat> um it's uncharacteristic of steph to leave without warning or to abandon her pets who were left behind at the home and i mean even if you have kids or you have pets that are like your kids um everyone knows that that they love their pets they love the kids they're gonna go home no one just leaves their pets or kids fucks off right investigators say the ex Ames gave inconsistent statements about her case and physical evidence indicated that she was deceased he has never been charged in her disappearance and now lives in Georgia Steph's case remains unsolved and foul play is expected uh, lots of BLM land in Oregon, I'm not quite sure what that means. Hey, Deb, my darling, you have none. You're a tattoo virgin. A billboard. We do we need a billboard? Billboard. I'm not sure what we're talking about. Okay, so it, it seems from going over that. Um. The. Disappeared.blog.com. Stephanie and Water Warner. This was in 2022. A billboard. Oh my God, Dave, you gave five dollars. Thank you so much. That's so cool. Kaleidoscope Warner tattoo, but got none so far. Uh, you know, they sew, they say, you can version of something. They say when you get it when we when you get a tattoo, um it something like is it's is it's good as sex for the first but like sex for the first time. It hurts for the first time, but then you go back for bigger and better things. You know? My I have none and absolutely love tattoos. I have enough surgery scars. I hope they can identify my body that way. Six cents, still lurky turkey. I'm here pretending that I'm not on YouTube live stream. We see you. <laughs> All right. So, again, this is a nice picture of Stephanie and Warner, 43-year-old uh, Ashland, Oregon. She was last seen in Ashland on July 4th, 2013. She disappeared while returning home from Ashland's 4th of July parade with her boyfriend Lenny Ames. Stephanie was born July 17, 1970. She previously lived in New Orleans, Louisiana. She formerly owned a restaurant called Magnolia Grill. She was a volunteer for the Jackson County Fuel Committee, an organization dedicated to help low income families having access to heating fuel which I think that is nice. At the time of her disappearance, Warner lived in a house in the unincorporated community of Rush, Oregon. Things mm -hmm. uh, uh, not. Tattoos on my bucket list, custom draw, no tramp stamp. No tramp stamps? <laughs> It is an odd place to get them, and I know that they called them tramp stamps, but I'm sure if you really wanted a tramp stamp, you'd think that no one would pick on you for it. I mean, it's, yeah, 
like if your name was Karen. I don't know. All right. On July 4th, 2013, Steph left home and drove to Ashland, Oregon to attend the Independence Day Parade with her boyfriend, Lenny Ames. Steph was captured on camera walking alongside the float for the Jackson County Full Fuel Committee. When the parade ended, she left with her boyfriend and drove back home to Rooch. Where's Rooch? I'm just going to look on the map and I'm going to do directions and I'm going to go Rooch, 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 Rooch. Let's have a look at this. What type of terrain it is. Um, so we have Ashland down here and Roosh over here. It says 38 minutes, 24 miles. So it's not um, that long. Uh, although the difference between Ashland um, down here, when you see, you know, heaps of uh, it's a town, there's people um, and everything. But then you come up into here, past the cemetery, into this little bit here, and you see that terrain, there's nothing nothing much up there, really. All right, where were we? Steph was seen market a mini market on Lozier Lane in Medford Oregon according to Ames she later dropped him off at the Rooch County store where they parted ways around 5 p.m. Steph never returned home that day and has never been heard from again a few days later her mother filed a missing persons report with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office when she couldn't contact her and I don't know if it's just me that found it a bit funny that her mum was the one that filed a missing persons report and not her partner but I, I'm not sure about that investigation Steph left behind all her personal belongings at home including her unintended pets her vehicle a dark green 2004 Nissan Sentra no, missing exterior SUV was found parked in her driveway. Authorities found no signs of forced entry or foul play in the vehicle or at her home. Going to bed, Pam. Night. Thank you for coming. Mullet says, arm tattoos are sexy as hell. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So... Let's talk about him. Lenny Ames in 2013 was a 61-year-old. Hang on. I'm addicted to my mints. Um, 61-year-old Lenny Ames was in a romantic relationship with Stephanie Warner. His primary residence was at a campsite on a mountain. And we did see it was not much around there. Ames told investigators that Warner dropped him off at the Roosh Country Store a convenience store on uh, Highway 238, about two miles from their home, which, again, if we look at that, uh, we can easily say that they... And then down there in the general store that he's talking about has got to be down here. Soon after... He reportedly paid a group of young men in a pickup to drive him back to the campsite. The next day, he claims he went to her house, but he did not see her. He borrowed her car and drove to the Williams store, further along the Highway 238, before returning it later that day. Ames subsequently returned to his campsite and stayed there for several days. He did not file a missing persons report for her, which makes me uh, a bit dubious. I thought that he would have. Missing woman's boyfriend named prime suspect in the disappearance. What's that? Why did he drop her off? Did she say she had a ride home from the store? Yeah, I don't know. Because her car's at home. Why didn't she take a car? 
So it won't, oh no, Steph dropped them off at the store. Right, okay. So she dropped him off. He got uh, back home in a group of young men in a pickup. Anyone corroborate that plan? I don't think so. The next day, Ames claimed he went to Warner's house, but he did not see her. So he borrowed her car and drove to the Williams store further along the highway. So he didn't see her, but how did he get the keys? Does she just leave the keys lying around? Do they have this relationship where he can just walk on and take the car anytime he wants to without talking to her? Makes it sound a little bit odd to me. He also subsequently returned to his campsite and stayed there for several days. Right. Missing woman's boyfriend named Prime Suspect. On July 8th, 2015, authorities officially named Lenny Ames the prime suspect in Stephanie Warner's disappearance. They believe she never left the area and was likely a victim of foul play. Ames was the last person to see her and reportedly gave inconsistent statements about her disappearance. A few weeks after she went missing, he stopped cooperating with investigators and subsequently left the state of Oregon. So um, that makes things harder that he's left as well. But you know what? If we look back at this, this terrain up here really looks like you can hide a body anywhere. There's miles and miles of just country and farms and mountains and, and county parks. If you wanted to get rid of it, um, I'm not showing you this, am I? <laughs> um, if someone wanted to bury someone around here, you know, it wouldn't be too hard. Well, that's my two cents worth. So... Foul play is strongly suspected in Stephanie's disappearance and authorities believe she was the victim of a homicide. Lenny Ames considered the prime suspect in Stephanie's disappearance have never been charged. The circumstances of Stephanie's disappearance remain unclear. Her case is currently classified as homicide. Her case remains unsolved. So that's just going over... Um, her appearance um she's really beautiful as well very pretty um what do we got here yes very world and rough terrain exactly it would be easy to bury a body somewhere there right i tried to go to your facebook but my phone won't let me that's a bit weird um on facebook i think it's still called new Zealand and world mysteries so be yeah, that might be the, the 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 why I don't know um you know there has been now a few I only think about three that I can think of two or three trials in the United States where they haven't had a body and uh, I know that's a really hard case to win if you don't have a body but I, I hope that if there's enough circumstantial evidence uh, with no doubt about what happened, I think if that started going, you know, more, I think that would be really good. All right, my friends, let me have a bit of a drink. I do have mullet. Oh no, oh, look at it, it's just green and blue, that's so funny. The blues are the ones that have come like, and because I've actually been on here for a couple of years, but I've been off and on and off and on, and the ones that actually have um, wrenches, the idea is I wanted the people that have been with me and stuck with me, supported me the longest, longest to have the, uh, have the wrenches and then when I get really big and like have hundreds of thousands of listeners <laughs> oh no my mods are all the ones that are stuck with me that was my theory anyway oh 
awesome mullet thank you for doing that all right uh another lady with a lot of tattoos on here so i will show you this tab cynthia crystal martinez and there is a lot of beautiful pictures of this of it as well she's been uh we're in the charlie project again she's been missing since 2017 from kaiser oregon she is an endangered missing race hispanic she was born in 1991 she was 26 years old but she would be 31 now height five foot one weight 120 to 140 pounds for clothing she had a short black romper with a pattern of pink and white roses and black open-toed lace-up ankle boots with stacked platform heels which i think must be the um i'm pointing at it which means you're going look look and it's like that's the wrong way i can't get it the right way <laughs> so these boots look like the ones you're talking about and i love them if i could walk in them photos of the romper and shoes and photo of martinez on the night of her disappearance are posted with this case summary so here's the outfit she associated uh vehicle light blue 2004 honda odyssey minivan which is accounted for and it's at the bottom here hispanic female she has black hair brown eyes Martinez was wearing false eyelashes at the time of her disappearance and she may wear artificial nails, fingernails. Her ears are pierced. She has the following tattoos. The name Dominguez on her upper chest. Ouch. Um, the words trust no one below it across her breasts. The word charisma on her upper right arm at the shoulder a princess crown on her upper left arm at shoulder, the phrase forgive, never forget on the top front of her left shoulder, the name Jessie on the top of her right shoulder, the number 503 behind her right. Phrase walk by faith, not by sight on the outside of her right calf, let us see an old English script between her left index finger and thumb. The face of Marilyn Monroe intertwined with a skull face on her right thigh with the phrase if you are going to be two-faced, at least make one of them pretty. That's quite a cool one. Um, and the word trust next to her side where the right arm is down and the word faith next to her side when her forearm is raised. Photos of some of her tattoos are posted with this case summary. Oh, my God. That lady's got some tattoos. She's got some tattoos. That's a lot. A lot. Like, I think that I'm quite tattooed. I've got quite a few, but then occasionally I see some that are, like, have more than me, and I think, jeez. Okay, details of disappearance. Let's get this. It just makes it easier for me to read. So... Cynthia left her home at 5 p.m. on July 15th, 2017 to go to a quinceanera party. I apologize for that. At 11 p.m. after the party, she went to the Tequila Nights Bar and Grill. She went there with a female friend and two men she did not know. Because she didn't have her purse and her outfit didn't have any pockets, her friend held her phone and identification identification for her it's um it's not it's not uncommon for young ladies to go out and want to look so fashionable that they end up in something that has no pockets or they don't want to use a purse with it i don't know it happens and then you have to get your mate to hold your your phone and your id it happens cynthia's companions left the bar without 15 minutes later she left the bar alone the surveillance cameras showed her coming back inside accompanied by another man just a few minutes later it's possible she was looking for a ride home since the people she'd come with had left 
Martinez left again with two Hispanic men in a light blue 2004 Honda Odyssey minivan a few minutes after 2.30 a.m. on July 16. So she left with two Hispanic men in the car. She never arrived home and has never been heard from again. And a photo of the minivan is posted with the case summary, which is up here. So, Thank you. I've got it to work. Awesome. I've got um, a great team over on Facebook. What I usually do is... Um, when I post my videos, because most of my videos are actually new for New Zealand cases, I'll put them out to share on YouTube, and I'll also put them on here. Um, but I, I do, yeah, let's just stop. Let's just keep going. Otherwise, I get off track because I'm talking, and you didn't come here for that. Authorities subsequently did, identified both those men she had been with. One was ruled out as a suspect in her case. The other one, Jamie Alvarez Oliveras, a farm worker from Mexico, is considered a person of interest in her disappearance. A photo of Alvarez Oliveras is posted with this case summary. He left town the same day Cynthia disappeared and his current whereabouts are unknown. Now, that is a red flag. If ever I've had a red flag in front of me, waving, yelling at me, red flag, red flag, that's somebody uh, leaving town the same day somebody else goes missing. Investigators found the minivan, which was Alvera's vehicle, parked at his ex-girlfriend's apartment on Cleveland Street in Oregon. They would like to speak to anyone who saw Martinez Oliveras on all the Honda Odyssey between 2.30 a.m. on July 16 and 11.45 a.m. on July 17 when they found it. Alvarez is also being sought for questioning in Martinez's disappearance. Her family doesn't believe she had met him before that night. Cynthia left behind four children. She was a mum of four. Um, which is just heartbreaking. One of whom was only three months old, just a baby. The night she disappeared was her first night out since the birth. Foul play is possible and her disappearance and her case remains unsolved. So we've got a really a young mum with a three-month-old baby and it's her first night to get out into town. So she, she goes with a couple of guys um, and her mate but they seem to all leave her and she's all alone and then she ends up with these two Hispanic men um, and she's seen leaving with them. Um, yeah, and she's never seen again. Some beautiful pictures. She was a lovely looking woman, a young lady. So I found this in the Statesman Journal dot com i'm not going to i'll play like a couple of minutes of this but i might get struck um for copyright uh but I'll let you. I guess I'll guess I'll let you. Uh, so obviously, just a um, video there, which I'll leave in the source below. Angelica Castillo sits in front of a wall covered in photos of her missing daughter. It has been almost two years since Cynthia Martinez left a Kaiser bar and vanished into the night. A growing rainbow hued collage of artwork by her her four children surrounds her photos in their Tigard home. So lots of photos of her and then her kids have drawn photos. Sad. They are growing so fast, Angelica said. Cynthia's youngest daughter was only two months old when she went missing. She's taken her first steps, celebrated two Christmases and said her first words without her mum. 
because we don't have answers, it makes it harder for our grandkids, she said. And I couldn't imagine having to deal, um, you know, telling the kids what's happened to their mum when they just don't even know themselves. Angelica and her husband Caesar used to spend their weekends and evenings driving the roads of Marion County searching for any sign of her. We would go searching for her in the beginning, but it got too hard for me, she said. I'd get so excited to go, but when I had to come back empty-handed, it was so painful. Every time Angelica hears about an unidentified body being found, she emails the Kaiser detective in charge and she asks, could this be my daughter's body they have found? But two years later, she's not been found, nor the man wanted in connection the case. Her disappearance remains a mystery. Here's uh, some information for you. So many people go missing in the United States, about 600,000 people every year. The disappearances are referred to by experts as the nation's silent mass disaster. Due in part to sheer volume, missing persons and identified human remains cases are a tremendous challenge to state and local law enforcement agents, said Nancy Ritter in the National Institute of Justice Journal. Um, the workload of these cases is staggering. A month after Cynthia's disappearance, Kaiser Police officials said they've spent more than a thousand hours on the case with the help of the FBI, the Oregon Department of Justice, the Marion County District Attorney's Office, and other local law enforcement agencies in both Marion and adjoining counties. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, NamUs, there are 450 open missing person cases in Oregon. The Centre for Hope, a non-profit created by two parents after their daughter disappeared in 1998, advises families on how to handle missing a loved one. In addition to contacting law enforcement immediately and pressing them to take your case seriously, Family members are advised to keep the public aware of the story. Angelica and her family have spent almost two years doing just that. And, you know, the, the reason I wish I was bigger and the reason I wish I had more subs, um, and I don't know why, I don't know why I'm not that popular, <laughs> is because the more people that see these cases, the more chance someone might see something or remember something or see that little guy, picture of that guy and think, oh, I saw him and give the cops a ring. That's what I want. Um, I think that I should have a lot more a uh, lot more subs and I don't know why, but it is what it is. The night, a year after the disappearance, Cynthia's family met with the community members at Charmer Jones Park in Woodburn for a candlelight vigil. It brought back pain memories for her mum she said it hurts it's like a cut and you're cutting it back open and everything else just comes we are broken and just waiting so we can be a whole family angela last her daughter on july 15th 2017 she and her husband took her out for a birthday breakfast and um, cynthia had turned 26 two days later two days earlier. They snapped a photo of her smiling, holding her two-month-old daughter, Sophia. The family made plans to go hiking in Silver Falls the next day. Angelica babysat the kids that evening while Martinez went to Quincy and Nera. It was her first night out since Sophia was born. Martinez got dressed up in black lace-up boots, long fake eyelashes. She took a photo of herself with her long, dark hair falling over one shoulder, past her shoulders and collarbone dotted with tattoos. Angelica later remembered calling around to double-check how many tattoos her daughter had left after she disappeared. She liked her tattoos. I'd give her a hard time and she wouldn't tell me until days later. Angela checked in with her mum at 10.30pm. Mum said she was still at the Quincyanera and was waiting for them to cut the cake. Then there was nothing, no texts, no calls, no knocks on the door. If anyone knows what a um, uh, uh, Quincy and Nera is, that would be really cool because I don't. Mm -hmm. 
when Martinez didn't show up, Cynthia didn't show up for the hike the next day, Angelica thought she might have slept in. But as the day continued, she checked in with her other daughter who hadn't heard from her either. Either She then found out that she didn't even come home that night. Angelica said it wasn't like Cynthia. She knew that something was wrong. She called the local Woodburn police who told her there wasn't much they could do because she was an adult. And, oh, you know how that makes me feel? That pees me off, guys. Um, you don't have to wait. I know that she's an adult and that she can do whatever she wants, but her mum and they know their kids, right? Pisses me off. Um, frustrated, Angelica began checking with her daughter's friends, wasting no time in trying to retrace her steps that night. She found out Martinez had met another friend at the Quincianera and left her with her to go to the Keela Nights in Kiza. Angelica and her husband, Caesar, drove to the Kiza bar. Nobody there remembered seeing anything out of the ordinary. They reviewed security footage and spotted Cynthia and her friend arriving because her outfit didn't have any pockets. She handed her phone and ID to her friend. They hung out in the bar until her friend left without Martinez. So this is them. So uh, for some reason, I presume the friend was a woman, but I don't think it matters either way. Gender's not the issue. Um, but it's did he just leave he said he left did he have the cell phone and id on him when he left and he left her alone which yeah um it was left with nothing right footage shows her going out to the parking lot before coming back in and jalanka thinks she was looking for her friend around closing time she left with two men in a blue minivan Angelica imagines her daughter, phoneless and miles from home, began talking with the men and found out they were heading to Woodburn. She thinks she went out to the parking lot and saw one of the men had a minivan with child car seats and thought it would be safe. And I don't know what you guys think. If you've seen a minivan and it had, like, car seats in it, would that put you at ease a bit? Like, would it make you think, oh, he's a, he's a dad, he's got kids, so, you know, he's got to, he'll be reliable. You'll get their mullet. I hope so. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a not, not people's cup of tea. Why is this not working? It's a Spanish day when girls turn 15. Okay. Awesome. A Spanish day. The cat just bounced off my hub, hubby's head to get to the food. <laughs> You don't trust a van, even if it's got car seats in it. You wouldn't think, oh, he's he'll be right. He's got kids. After reviewing the footage, Angelica began sharing photos of the man on Facebook. Once poster recognised him as then 30-year-old Jamie Alvarez Oliveira. Another sent her his address. Angelica went to the address in Woodburn. A blue minivan was parked in front. The woman who answered the door denied knowing him, but after Angelica pressed her for info, she admitted that he was her husband. She insisted she didn't know where he was and refused to say any more, closing the door. That's real cool that um, over Facebook and putting his photo out, someone came back with his address and who he was. She was able to go to the house. Uh, very dangerous going alone, but yeah. Angelica, Angelica said she couldn't leave without answers. She kept knocking on the door until someone called the police. I told them, hey, you could have helped me out, but I had to do it on my own, she said. One of the officers was really nice, and he told us to go to Kiza Police because it happened in Kiza. Angelica went to the police department. By then, it was nearly 2 a.m. on Monday. It had been almost 24 hours since Cynthia went missing. She said Kiza police immediately launched an investigation. Unfortunately, it wasn't fast enough, Caesar said. Later, we found out that Sunday is when he left, the day he fled. If right from the beginning, the other police department would have helped us, we would have had a much greater chance of catching him. Absolutely, they left it. 
after 24 hours there's so much that can go on in 24 hours and the guy left in that 24 hours so don't trust the van only if they got tacos and candy <laughs> uh, candy max any van is especially white vans i reckon especially white vans with tinted windows i think those are um yeah half perverts and half <laughs> um person of interest news of martinez's disappearance began spreading local tv stations newspapers and national publications picked up the story of the mother of four a facebook group missing cynthia period sprung up it must mean uh, angelica said the group was started by a stranger who reached out to her wanting to spread awareness about her daughter's case the woman posts to the account sometimes we'll have a little look hey what did she call it missing cynthia oh, no yeah okay hang on let's have a look oh no i'm putting it, putting it in facebook no idea what i'm doing Search Facebook, paste. So this is the um, her Facebook page. That's got about four point nine k followers. Um, posts in twenty twenty one. There doesn't seem to be many after that, so maybe they're not um, using it anymore. Alvarez, what the hell did you do with our Cynthia? Where, where, where did that go? I was just reading something and then the whole page flipped and I lost it. What the fuck? uh-huh all right no where'd you go again go back can you you can see what's going on here right right oh fuck oh my can you see what's going on here i'm going to try one more time i want to go there stop and i wanted okay i better stay here jamie alvarez alvarez olivera what the hell did you do with our cynthia the woman recently wrote time is up turn yourself in today on august 9th 2017 three weeks after martinez bade her last goodbyes to her children Kisa police publicly identified alvarez olivera as a person of interest in the disappearance they confirmed he was one of the men accompanying C the Cynthia outside the bar. The second man, who was not identified by police, cooperated with investigators, telling them he was dropped off first in Kaiser. Alvarez Oliveira was last employed as a farm labourer who harvested berries. He worked for a labour firm where he would call in every morning and be directed to do different labour jobs. So, look... Um, looking out for this guy he'd be doing laboring or he'd be doing like picking plants or whatever police believe he left marion county on july 16th although they were unsure with rumors swirled on social media that he had fled to mexico police declined whether they were searching for him in mexico so um keep looking at that ugly mug shop um i feel a bit uh upset with her friend that left her there um, and took all her stuff maybe the friend didn't realize or didn't remember that he had all her stuff we don't know if that happened and i bet that friend is probably really really guilty um so yeah 
Now, where were we? What was you been, What are you guys been up to? Max, my troll was my spotter buddy here. <laughs> Someone's been playing tricks. <laughs> and you don't think Jeff would do anything like that? Jeff is a very nice guy. Absolutely. Deb is a wonderful person as well. Yes, she is. And you guys are lovely as well, my friends. So um, that's all I'm going to do for Oregon cases today. Um, about an hour of speaking is more than enough for me. Before we have a chat, I thought we'd better do um, the wheel of the wheel of still have still haven't come up with a name. Um, um, the wheel of let's just call it the fucking wheel. The wheel. A wheel of names. All right. For, wheel of crime. That's what I should do. Eh? So, before we have a um, Nata Nata, Nata Nata chat, let's go. There we go. We'll hide that. Are you ready? There we go. What is it going to be? Washington. I'm guessing Washington the state, not Washington, D.C. Um, isn't Washington next door to Oregon? That's a, bit, that's a bit random, isn't it? Um, yeah, so Washington. Um, we'll just we'll have a bit of a, a chat. Are you? The only couple of years left. Deb is a wonderful person. She is. I remember when he first came into Dad's, I mean, Jeff took over. It's nice. It's really, really nice um, to have pages where you can come to and you really like the people that are in there and you can chat and, um, yeah, it's really nice. I go into some rooms um, and I always say hello when I get there and if I don't get at least, you know, one or two hellos back, then I just leave. I, I, I think 90% of what draws me to a channel is if I'm able to have the chat because I like the chat and I like the, talking to people and, you know, showing the fact as you do. So I emailed, uh, I don't know if everyone will know, but I really love a... Um, channel called dad's gone live um he goes um he goes most nights quite late for new zealand tents and and things that people in chat have sent to him and he goes and gives them out to the homeless and he's also buys mcdonald's and gets it out to the homeless as well um, and then the chat is with Jacob. The chat is, is just a loving, safe environment. It's um, a really family friendly environment and it's just amazing. Anywho, I talked to Dad, I talked to Jacob, and on the nights that he is not going on live, in case he doesn't feel like it, or the kids were sick or he doesn't feel well, I'm actually going to play some of his replays here so people can come over here and we can watch it. I can't put the music onto it or can't put sound on, but I can replay his videos and we can come over here and we can all chat. And that's trying to get um, all the other dads gone live people into it to get on as well, you know, on the bandwagon and, yeah. What, what are we sorry to hear? People love you in New Zealand and dads. Oh, that's nice. I do appreciate it. 
when I first started watching dads, I didn't talk for a month. Yeah, some people are just lurkers. Um, yeah, but that's all right. And subs go up and down too. You like, um, I've gone down two subs since I started the show. <laughs> Um, so that means three people will come past this live and thought, oh, fuck no, I'm not listening to her, <laughs> which is funny. They go up and down and up and down and up and down. I usually have about 10 people in a chat, sometimes up to 13. I'm hoping that it will get better. Um, but I'm just going to try my hardest and, and go for it, I guess. That's for sure. You had to feel out the channel. Yeah, sometimes you do. you got to sit in the back and just sort of suss it out and see if they people talk the same shit you talk and um, if it's for you because you can only really talk in a, an environment that's for you, right? Dad's just went over 8,000, so you own 20 members tonight. Oh, my God. And you just gave me five. Please don't do it if you can't afford it. But it's very appreciated. It's quite exciting, actually. For the first time ever, I might actually get um, a pay from this, from um, YouTube. I might actually get a pay from YouTube, which it won't be much, but, but it might be something. So that's really, it really, really means that people appreciate my work and, I actually put a lot of work in when I'm researching cases and I and stuff and yeah, I love it. So we're going to end it, guys. I've got a lot of stuff to do with New Zealand um, cases to look at, and then Dad's channel is Dad's Gone Live. Thanks, Dev. A lot of crap in Dad's chat on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, but. That's all good. You'll get the New Zealand. Thanks, Max. Thanks, uh, Kaleidoscope, for coming. Mullet, thank you for coming. Deb, thank you for coming. That was really nice of you. Um, Pam, thank you, my darling. Phoebe, I know you were watching or having a sleep. Six Sense Amelia, thank you for popping in. And Deb for the $5. That was amazing. So cool. Shauna, thank you for coming in slow motion, came in too. So we had some people coming in and, and looking. Bye to everybody now. Okay, we're out of here. I will see you guys at um, Dad's Gone Live later on when he comes on. And um, some Kiwis, if you want to come over too and have a look, it would be really good. Jeff, thank you, TJ. Peace and love to everyone. Bye now, guys.